Welcome to a Clued In bonus episode. I'm Sarah. And I'm Brooke. And we both love mystery. Hi, Brooke. Hi, Sarah. So it's time to start talking about this Write With Us, Write Along. We we really don't even have a name for this project yet. So this is a planning day for us. Absolutely. And we thought we would record it so that our listeners and hopefully our readers uh, can get a sense of what this process is like for us. Exactly. This is brand new. We've never done it before. So we're just like getting real with everyone and you get to see the process (laughs) from the very beginning and then read along with us as we write this mystery together. That's right. And I don't know that we will record all of our planning sessions, but I think subscribers to the cartel can expect to hear at least a couple of these as we go along. And of course, they'll be able to read what we write uh, as we write it. So they'll get to see the raw first draft, which is often very messy. (laughs) Messy, maybe, you know, even a little confusing, but it will be fun. And cartel members, although we may not record all of this type of content as we go along, it's kind of a big experiment. They will at least be getting regular updates on how the process is going, whether that's in our Substack uh, newsletter or whatever format. We will definitely keep them updated and probably be asking for some advice as we've already done in a survey. That's right. We asked our listeners and social media followers and our respective newsletter subscribers. We asked them to weigh in on the setting, whether it was going to be urban or rural, and the demographic of our sleuth. We were so happy. 129 responses so far. So thank you, everybody, for taking the survey. And the results are in. 74% of you preferred like a small rural town setting and 62% of you wanted that middle age, like maybe recently empty nester sleuth. So um, I guess that's what we're doing, Sarah. Okay. Well, um, I am surprised that the numbers were so high for the uh, rural small town sleuth. Um I thought it might be fun to write uh, an urban setting, but maybe we can do that uh, for the next one, Brooke, because I am I hope that this isn't the, the only time that, that we do this. But, you know, ask me in a few months, I may say never again. <laughs> <laughs> we will wait and see. I agree. Um, so everyone, we brainstormed a little bit on each of those settings of some general ideas before we put it out to survey. And I will tell you that the like the urban setting, we're thinking of like a an apartment building. So you still get like the insular community and it would be fun. So if you get that opportunity in the future, know that we have some ideas up our sleeves. But for this one, we will write in a uh, small rural community. Um, Might have to lean on you a little bit, Brooke, for input on that, because I have spent most of my life living in a urban center. Yeah, we're very uh, separate that way, right? We we did a social media post recently, if you guys caught it, where I asked who's the city mouse and who's the country mouse. And uh, I am the country mouse. Uh, um, But I got you covered because this is all I've known, Sarah. (laughs) I will say like my extended family um, is from a small, a couple of small communities. And I remember as a child spending time in those communities and kind of loving the freedom that I Mm -hmm. had to kind of wander around because the town was very, very small. Everybody knew everybody. I could go to the library and borrow books just using my mom's name as the <laughs> I <laughs> as love the that. borrower, even though she hadn't lived in the town for some time. But you know, um, my grandmother was still there, and um, I think I think it'll be really fun to write about. I do too, and that everybody knowing everyone else is you know, the thing that's going to lend itself really good to our quaint traditional mystery. So what are some ideas that you have about the small town setting, Sarah? Do you have anything in mind? 
One question would be whether what the proximity to the next major center is. Like, are we Mm -hmm. really isolated or are we 30 minutes to, uh, you know, bigger amenities and, and more people? Yeah, that's a good question. Which I think would help us determine what kind of a role, if any, uh, a police formal investigation would have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great point. When I think of it, I think of that second uh, scenario that you mentioned where, you know, it might be 30, 45 minutes, but you know, there's, you know, a shopping center and things like that. I think it also gives um, us some opportunity, like if we were going to continue this and write more than one, that um, that gives you just a bit of a larger world to be able to carry out a series. You know, always want to leave that door open. Yeah, definitely. That's a great point. And that's probably far enough away that there might be, um, say, one or two police officers who may or may not live in the town, but have kind of the town as part of their, their jurisdiction. Ooh, I like that, that they're not there all the time. Mm, I really enjoy that. Uh And so maybe our sleuth is like, well, I got to take it on myself to do this investigating while you're in yeah, you know, the next town over or whatever. And we could maybe even have, I don't know, something else happen that kind of pulls the police in a couple of different directions where they can't spend all of their time investigating this. I like that idea a lot. And um, I know when we were doing just our very vague general brainstorming to give the two choices of locations, we talked about perhaps this little town is sort of known for something. And one idea we said was maybe a a literature festival, like maybe it's the town Mm -hmm. where a famous author, you know, was, was born or had lived. And so now this town has kind of built themselves around this. Um, So I was wondering if maybe we come up with a fictional famous author patterned after, you know, are they an Agatha Christie type or are they, you know, a, um, a ro- a famous romance author or something. And then this place has, you know, festivals and even their shops are kind of themed, you know, literary. Mm, I like, I like that idea. And it might be interesting if the author that this town is kind of built around isn't a mystery author. I agree. I think it might get too, um, like it might get over the top if it's a murder mystery in a murder mystery town. It feels a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It does. It does. It does feel a lot. I mean, you could get a bit meta. Um, <laughs> but if it was, yeah, like if it was a a romance author um, and the town, maybe it's around Valentine's Day or something, and the town has this big celebration and you come to the town to find love or whatever. Oh, I right? love that. Uh-huh. That could be a way to do it. I do like the idea of the town having some kind of theme, mm-hmm. right? That, I don't know, one other theme that I'd thought of was like a gardening town, right? Where everybody is super into into gardens and and you know, For then sure. you've got some tools at your disposal that uh-huh. um, may may come into play. Maybe there's a, like a nursery or a sort of, um, some reason that it's like that has become this center because they do a lot of agriculture or something like that. Yeah. Or like a big flower festival. Yes. And then they have festivals. That's yeah. So yeah, we'll have to maybe nail down what that theme is. Uh, I'm not sure which one I'm leaning towards more, the, um, author or the, uh, agricultural flower town. I know. They. I think we need to think about it. They both have their perks, especially since I think the kind of the gardening town kind of goes well with the first thing we said where it's, you know, just adjacent to a large city, but it just mm-hmm. makes, it gives it that very country, like just little, um, you know, enclave feel. So yeah. So we'll kick that around a little more. Yeah. Yeah. And so for our sleuth... Empty nester. I was thinking more about someone who 
maybe returns home to look after an ailing parent. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so they grew up in the town, but they have been away for a little bit. Um, And the parent, um, we would have to handle this really delicately, but if the parent had dementia or something, that parent is an unreliable narrator, right? So I don't know if, I don't know how that would work. Um, but there could be some kind of neighborhood tensions that have developed over the last little bit, maybe as this parent's health has declined. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, uh, I know there can be some personality changes that come with dementia and, you know, maybe some, um, tension as a result of that for sure and arguments with neighbors kind of. I, I was envisioning that it's a neighbor who dies mm-hmm. and maybe the parent is. Has had some conflicts with them. I like that. You know, and it goes really well with what I had in my head, Sarah, because like when I started thinking about, okay, empty nester, I thought, okay, is she recently, I feel like she's a single person, whether or not she was, you know, widowed in an earlier part of her life or she's been through a divorce, whatever. She's single, but that, you know, okay, now she's an empty nester. What's she going to do with the next part of her life? And I like the idea of, well, you know, mom really needs help. And so I think I'll go home. It's time to start the new chapter. She needs me to come and, um, and be with her and, And help her. And so that's the impetus to, you know, make this change and go to a new place. One of the comments in our survey suggested that the sleuth's job, like if you get the impression that she has retired, I guess, which we still need to um, ascertain that because empty nester could be, you know, even 45 or 50, depending on when you had your children. But Mm -hmm, the comment mm -hmm. was... (laughs) Um, if her old jobs could give her some skills to then solve mysteries. And I think that's an important thing to have um, is a reason why she's going to be good at this. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, and I also agree with your earlier point. I would probably put the age of this sleuth younger than retirement age, 40s or 50s. Mm-hmm. And as you say, if you know the family was started – quite young, then um, it wouldn't be outside of the realm of possibility for someone in their late 40s to be an empty nester. I think that's a really nice age to make this sleuth because it is a a bridge age, right? That big change Mm -hmm. that you're having in your life. And I think it's still going to draw our readers who have already been through that. Um, I think it's still close enough for them to relate to it. And I think we should just confirm that we're going to have a female rather than a male sleuth. We keep saying she. Yeah. I feel the most comfortable writing a female sleuth. And I think that that is the preference in this genre. Don't you, Sarah? I think it's the overwhelming majority is um, female sleuths, but the book that I'm reading right now has a male sleuth. And I think that's why I Mm -hmm. um, wanted to just confirm that that's, that's what we were doing. Yeah. I wonder if the parent that she goes home to take care of should be a father rather than a mother though. So it's not like completely female centric. Yeah. I like that. And maybe she's going to end up working out some relationship issues that she's had with her dad over the years. Yeah, this is a good opportunity to do that, right? And and um, if it turns out that the dad does have uh, dementia, then she could be feeling a little bit of time is slipping away for her to have that resolution. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. Oh, I see a lot of character development opportunities in that. Totally, totally. Yeah. So what could we, if she's in her mid to late forties, she's probably still working or has just, she needs to have some sort of employment or. Yeah, she does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I would think so. What could it be that would afford some legitimate investigative skills, but also afford the flexibility to be moving home and 
Or you know what? It could be that she's not moving home. She could not have grown up in that town, right? It could be where her parents retired. Mm, I like that. And they would retire to this quaint little touristy town because they love to garden. And so, or, or, w- or whichever yeah. it is, they're like, oh, we love that place. That's where we're going to retire. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she maybe doesn't have all of, she's got her parents' background of who all of the, the characters of the town are, but hasn't, and, and maybe some of that is not consistent with what her experience ends up being. Especially right? if we have dad being an unreliable uh, narrator, she could get some misinformation, which could be really fun. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So what are some things that you can do? I mean, so she could have her own business, right? What are some mm-hmm. things that she could do as a self-employed person and just move her service to this new little town? Well, she could be a writer or an editor. Mm-hmm. She could be like a small artisan. So whether it's, I don't know, something, I got to think of something that's portable, right? Like um, photographer. It's not really, yeah. a, is that a job anymore? <laughs> I don't know. And I don't know if you would, how well you would be able to do that from the town, unless it meant she was traveling regularly into the into the bigger center, Mm -hmm. but then she doesn't get to do all the investigating that she wants to do. Right. True. But it could be, I don't know. I'm just thinking like she's got an Etsy shop and she sells. Oh yeah. An online business. Okay. She has an online business. Mm -hmm. And let's be real here. This is our world and she can be a highly successful Etsy shop owner selling, you know, some obscure thing. It, she can, Gain that success because we give that to her, even if in the real world, it's really, really hard to make a living <laughs> doing that yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We've got some creative uh, liberty here. <laughs> um, uh, okay, we have to give this some thought, but what what would give her the skills to be a good investigator? I do like the idea that she's an editor because that is, mm-hmm. you know, we've worked with editor Sarah. They have to be so detail oriented and to, you know, especially somebody who looks at plot lines and does developmental editing, I think about the skills that it requires. And, you know, they're basically taking this story apart and putting it back together in a sense. And that would be a really great investigator too. I think so. And I haven't come across a lot of books that feature an editor as the sleuth. Loads with an author as sleuth, right? Yeah. And she might not even be, we'll have to decide what type of work she edits. Does she edit nonfiction? Does she edit fiction? Does she work as an editor for, you know, like various publications so that she has different clients there? I think there's a lot of different directions we could take that. Yeah. 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 The only editor as sleuth that I can think of is, um, the character in the magpie murders and the, um, it's not the magpie no. murders. It's magpie murders, right? No, the. <laughs> um, uh, and I can't remember the name of the the sleuth right now. But yeah, she. I mean, there there have been books around the publishing industry, right? Sure. But yeah, someone who's maybe she's a freelance editor. Mm-hmm. Um, that would give her, you know, then it wouldn't really matter where she was. Um, doing that work from and she can comfortably move to her parents retirement town yeah I like that idea and the idea of being a freelance editor potentially opens up maybe some um, mini mysteries or like a another plot line because she could discover something in her work that you know leads to a sort of mystery to solve yeah. And as you say, like if she's freelance, then she maybe has worked on a lot of different manuscripts and there may have been something that she's learned from a past oh, yes. editing job that she can draw on, right? Some some fact, some yes. thing that she knows. Okay. Funny aside, and I don't think our friend Lori Briley would mind me mentioning this. Lori has been on the show before and she writes middle grade mysteries, but Lori also doesn't edit, but she does freelance writing. And one of the magazines she writes for is a nut magazine. So there could be some sort of obscure 
yes. detail that these people know about because of this work they've done. Like, yeah, I love that. Okay. Okay. So she's an editor, has moved to the town where her parents retired. Her mother has died. Her father is, his health is ailing. Yes. And there's some, I don't think we've quite landed on what the hook for the town is, but there's some draw, some sort of festival that brings people to the town that everybody gets into um, as, as part of this festival, right? It's whether it's gardening or our earlier idea, you know, if it was an, uh, an author, um, there could be some tension between the editor and the author. If the author like comes to the town, right? Because they still want to be kind of the big shot literary person. And, you know, our editor character is kind of, maybe she has a little notoriety too. I don't know. We'll have to play with that. Or what if she was reading one of his books and noticed that there was something wrong? And that maybe that happened in the past. Maybe she yeah, like yeah, outed yeah, yeah, him yeah, yeah. for something in the past when she did a job yeah. for him. She could be a bit of a like a a bit aggressive in her like demeanor, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that is that's an another opportunity for like a character arc where she yeah over the course of the story kind of softens. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. She could be she could be super confident in herself and like think she's never wrong. Right? Yes. Um because I, I think editors need to be very confident in the in the work that they're doing. Yes. Um and it yeah. and they have to quite honestly, I would have a terrible time doing it because they have to take someone's baby and give them really bad news about it. So they have to be really willing to, you know, point out flaws. I don't think she would last very long if she didn't do that in a gentle way. But um, maybe this was one of her first clients was this author and he's never kind of forgiven her for the, for the harsh words that she had um that she had shared or, and maybe they need to have a bit of a, a confrontation. I don't know that they need to have a romance, but um, they need to have some sort of like, yeah, okay, we can be friends. Yes. I, I think that is an opportunity for the, the quote unquote romance line. You know, sometimes in things that I've written, it's like a friend mance, if you want to call it that, where they're bitter enemies, but then, you know, over the course of the story, they become friends. And it gives, I think, the story the same type of push and pull that a romance line does. And, but I will tell you, Sarah, a couple of the comments in our survey said some flirting or a little bit of light romance wouldn't be bad. So I think we leave that door open. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. I feel, I feel like I'm pretty comfortable with kind of where we're starting Mm -hmm. this out any other comments that came through that you think we should be thinking about? Several people mentioned that they would like there to be a pet. And now that we've established that she's going to her dad's home, I wonder if it would be fun that dad has this pet that our sleuth really does not like. She's not a pet yes. person. She doesn't want to have a pet. Except, of course, we know because this is this kind of mystery that she will come to love the pet, but it could take a while. And but dad, of course, loves this, whatever it is. We have to come up with what kind of animal. I like it. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. Uh, A little enemies to lovers. (laughs) We've got a couple opportunities (laughs) for that. (laughs) And I will say, you know, Sarah's comment, she said, you know, I feel pretty good about where we're at. And, um, you know, this is kind of a peek behind the scenes, obviously. And Sarah and I are both what's considered discovery writers. So as long as we have some waypoints, so to speak, um, and then, of course, the general structure of the way a mystery happens, um, we just kind of dive in and start writing and seeing what happens. 
Yeah. So, I mean, we haven't really talked about what the mystery is going to be, but I, to your point, Brooke, feel like I've got enough, I've got a good enough picture of the character and the situation. I feel like it could probably start, but I do like to have a sense of what that where the story is going. So what is that mystery? And I think I mentioned before this, so it's a neighbor that dies, Mm -hmm. I was thinking, right? And so the dad has had a conflict with the neighbor. We could have a couple of other people having had some, um, you know, some sort of, whether it's a argument about his flowers encroaching over on another neighbor's or having copied another neighbor's design or something like that right Mm -hmm. um uh if we're doing the garden themed town I think I have enough to write some sort of mystery and I feel good about like nailing down okay the victim is going to be the neighbor because once we know the victim then we can start building around like who the other suspects are and what everybody's motives were yeah and having the victim of as the neighbor gives the sleuth the reason for why she would be investigating. A hundred percent. Because yep. if if her father is kind of the main suspect, obviously she wants to clear his name. Mm-hmm. For sure. And then that introduces her into the world of sleuthing. And we'll see if maybe I shouldn't say the next book before we even get this book <laughs> written, but I guess that's where my mind went. We have the opportunity. <laughs> Well, I think, Brooke, this is going to be fun. I think our next step is to start getting some words down. Definitely. And so everyone, if this has whet your appetite and you'd like to find out more about this uh, project and follow along with us, please consider becoming a member of the cartel. We have all the information out on our website and um, we'll also leave a link in social media so that you can can find us. And thanks for listening today to Clued in Mystery. I'm Brooke. And I'm Sarah. And we both love mystery. Clued in Mystery is written and produced by Brooke Peterson and Sarah M. Stephen. Music is by Shane Ivers. If you liked what you heard, please consider telling a friend, leaving a review, or subscribing with your favorite podcast listening app. Visit our website at cluedinmystery.com to sign up for our newsletter, The Clued in Chronicle, or to join our paid membership, The Clued in Cartel. We're on social media at Clued in Mystery.